Aaron. Yeah. Why didn't you say it the first time I said a a Ron? Because it's pronounced Aaron. You done messed up, a a Ron. Aaron is here, everyone. Welcome back for more SPTV, where every day is a great day to leave the cult of Scientology. Scientology done messed up again. Uh, this didn't happen today or yesterday. It happened many, many months ago. But it hit the uh, it hit the L.A. Times. It hit the pages of the L.A. Times. It was either late last night or first thing this morning. I'm not sure. This morning, Natalie Webster, in her morning recap, already covered some of the information that I'm about to share with you. So I don't know whether this thing really came out late last night, which seems unlikely, or super early this morning. But guys, Scientology done messed up. When it harasses, and harasses is putting it mildly. I, I, I'm going to have to figure out what word to use to describe this. Maybe you guys can help me in the live stream. But the prosecutor in the, in the Danny Masterson case, Deputy District Attorney Reinhold Mueller, has gone on record saying that his house was burglarized, an attempted burglary. His cell service and Wi-Fi was interfered with in his home and he was run off of the road. I'm going to say by Scientology goons. Now, Deputy Dave Reinhold Mueller is a very conservative and responsible and careful man. And in the speech that he gave, he did not specifically name the Church of Scientology. It would be irresponsible for a man in his position to make um, essentially uh, 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 accusations of criminal behavior against an individual or an organization without being able to provide hard evidence. But he did provide these details in a speech that he was giving at an award ceremony where he received an award for his prosecution of Danny Masterson. And we all know it's been covered extensively here and many other places that at least half of the Danny Masterson prosecution involved Scientology, exposing Scientology. Um, e even in the proceedings, things came up where Scientology was actively interfering with the case. Uh, uh, the, uh, one of Danny Masterson's attorneys happens to be the daughter of Scientology's attorneys, uh, Ma Robert E. Mangles and Kate Mangles, father-daughter. All sorts of Scientology craziness um, played a role every single day in the Danny Masterson prosecution. So Reinhold Mueller is getting an award and he's giving this speech about the fair game tactics, the harassment, the intimidation that he experienced at the hands of, we're all filling in the blank and saying Scientology. So I'm gonna show you the LA Times article. And I really, really, I'm really hoping there's a chance I might by the end of the day be able to get my hands on um, the actual audio of the speech that Reinhold Mueller gave. And if I can get that, um, I will publish that. That would be absolutely amazing. Uh, let's just take a look at some of this. I'm going to take my time on this, guys. It is a long article. I'm not going to read all of it, but I am going to read a lot of it. And I'll throw in some chapter breaks after this live stream is over so that people can more easily navigate through uh, my reading of this article. And, and by the way, this is by um, this is by James Queeley of the LA Times. And I've read this through. I think this, this really is a, a really well-researched and well-written article. Scientology tried to derail... Danny Masterson's rape trial by harassing the prosecutor. Lawsuit says, church calls claim false. No shocker there. All right, I'm going to zoom in on this a little more. Nearly six months after actor Danny Masterson was convicted of sexually assaulting two fellow members of Scientology, lawyers for his victims filed a document that contained a stunning new allegation against Scientology. Submitted in a downtown LA court as part of a years old civil lawsuit against Scientology, the document referenced a purported effort by Scientology to derail the criminal proceedings against Danny Masterson. Quote, defendants and their agents engaged in a campaign of harassment and intimidation directed at one of the prosecutors assigned to Danny Masterson's trial. The declaration from civil attorney Simon Lean read that prosecutors home and car windows were broken. The prosecutors home electronics were tampered with and defendant's agents surveilled the prosecutor. The December 2023 declaration did not name the prosecutor or offer any additional detail, and Simon Lean declined to comment. The claim, which was deep within a 372-page document, has not been previously reported. Scientology vigorously denied that Scientology had anything to do with the incidents involving the prosecutor. 
But it was not the first time that Scientology was quietly and publicly accused of attempting to interfere in the Danny Masterson years long legal saga. In a speech last fall, LA County Deputy District Attorney Reinhold Mueller delivered remarks that contained allegations nearly identical to those from the lawsuit. And, I, and let, we don't have to be cute about it. Um, the reason the claims were identical is because the references in the lawsuit are referring to Deputy DA Reinhold Mueller. In the speech given after he received an award for his work on the Danny Masterson case, Reinhold Mueller told hundreds of colleagues, including former district attorney Jackie Lacey, about a pattern of disturbing incidents he allegedly experienced in late 2022 ahead of Danny Masterson's first trial. Mueller said he was run off the road and that his home was vandalized, according to the video. He also said that cellular and internet service had been inexplicably knocked out at his residence. LAPD detectives on the case were also stalked, Mueller said in the video, and had their photographs taken while they were off duty. Mueller did not directly blame Scientology in his speech, but two law enforcement sources told the LA Times that um, he accused Scientology of being behind the incidents in discussions with the LA County District Attorney's Office Bureau of Investigation, which reviews threats against prosecutors. That is Reinhold Mueller. LAPD officers responded to an attempted break-in at Mueller's home in February 2022, according to a document reviewed by, reviewed by the Times. Responding officers noted damage to a window and described the incident as an attempted burglary, according to the, doc to the document, which describes the suspect as unknown. After the break-in, the district attorney's office conducted a threat assessment of Mueller's home and had security stationed there for at least one night, said the sources, who requested anonymity because they were not authorized to speak to the media. Mueller declined a request for an interview and a spokeswoman for the DA's office declined to comment. No criminal charges have arisen from Mueller's claims, and it does not appear the prosecutor has provided evidence for his allegations that the incidents were carried out at the direction of Scientology. Uh, of course, Scientology's um, spokeshole, Corinne Powell, uh, basically said, it's all lies. It's all uh, organized, targeted harassment campaign of religious bigotry against Scientology. Uh, that's all they know how to say anyway. Uh, Mueller, however, was not the only person involved in the Danny Masterson case to accuse Scientology of harassment and intimidation. LAPD detectives who investigated Danny Masterson also said they had been surveilled, watched, or experienced some type of harassment, which they attributed to agents or individuals from Scientology, according to former LAPD uh, chief Michael Moore. An LAPD investigation turned up no proof that Scientology harassed the detectives, Moore said in an interview late last year. I don't think that's a big surprise. I don't expect a lot of proof to come up in things like this. One of the women behind the December legal filing that contained the harassment allegations involving a prosecutor was Chrissy Carnell Bixler who claimed in the lawsuit that the, that Scientology or its agents tampered with her home security systems and vandalized her car and described an incident in which someone attempted to run her off the road after she accused Danny Masterson of rape. The Times typically withholds the identity of victims of sexual assault, but Bixler has spoken publicly about the case and is a named plaintiff in the suit. Chrissy Bixler, Chrissy Carnell Bixler, has been very public. Um, as has her husband, rock star Cedric Bixler Zavala, who I had the pleasure of meeting for the first time at the second Danny Masterson trial. And um, um, Cedric is uh, the lead singer for the, the band Mar the Mars Volta. And also, um, it, it's, he, 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 sing he has sung for a lot of bands, but it seems the other band that most people know of is At The Drive-In. And so that is Chrissy, and that is Cedric. And... Um, they, uh, Chrissy is, I'm trying to think it, how many of the Jane Doe's are actually, have actually been public with their identity. And, um, more than one of them have been, but, um, Chrissy has been the most consistently, like some of the Jane Doe's have identified themselves publicly, but are still not really referred to other than as Jane Doe's. Chrissy's pretty much the exception to that. And, um, yeah, let me see here. What else did I want to, there's, there's more I want to cover on this. Mm -mm -mm. All right, let's see. Another plaintiff in the case whose name is not public alleged that the unidentified men were following her in downtown Los Angeles during the trial. Scientology has repeatedly denied wrongdoing in, the la in that suit and Danny Masterson dismissed it as an attempt to smear Scientology when it was first filed in 2017. It's funny, as soon as I, sorry guys, getting a little phlegmy these days. Hmm. 
It usually doesn't happen until I've been talking for like 90 minutes straight, but. Um, okay, when, when I see uh, multiple um, people making the same accusations against Scientology, I instantly know that a Scientologist would explain it away by people uh, getting together, uh, um, conspiring to get on the same page and tell the same story. That's how Scientology explains anything away. But there's other even like other real world examples that can't be explained away and uh, as easily like um, protesters all magically having nails in their tires. Like, it's like <laughs> there, there, there's some types of harassment and, and actions by Scientology that are so like blatant and egregious that not even a Scientologist could be like, oh yeah, all of a sudden all the protesters just magically get nails and like multiple tires and their cars get keyed, like just randomly, just a coincidence. That's like, you know, when, when it's a real world thing like that, that you can physically prove, like things are happening in the same, you know, the same time, uh, the same time frame and the same general location, the same group of people. I don't know. I'm just thinking out loud here, guys. Oftentimes, What's going on in my head as I'm reading this stuff is what would a Scientologist think about this? How would a Scientologist justify this? And um, and it is just astonishing to me that multiple Jane Doe's and the district attorney and LAPD officers all claim the exact same kind of harassing, stalking, and surveilling behavior by Scientology and their agents. Could even a Scientologist reasonably convince themselves that former Scientologists and LAPD officers and a deputy district attorney are all conspiring just to tell the same story because it sounds good and would make Scientology look bad. It seems like even a Scientologist would be hard pressed to go that far out on a limb. All right, let's see what else we have here. Danny Masterson was convicted of two counts of rape in May of 2023 and sentenced to 30 years in prison. Um, guys, to be fully accurate, he was actually sentenced to two consecutive life sentences in prison. He will become eligible. He will first uh, only become eligible for parole after 30 years. His sentence was actually two consecutive life sentences. Um, the count. Okay, we'll just fast forward here. Um, let me see. I won't make you guys look at all this while I'm scrolling it. There's definitely more I want to read on this. I'm just going to find the parts that I want to aren't worth reading. Okay, this part's interesting. The initial case against Danny Masterson ended in a mistrial. And uh, Deputy DA Reinhold Mueller recounted in his, in his award acceptance speech that concerns about Scientology were a constant before it reached the courtroom. He spoke about bringing a colleague onto the case and said, I felt it was important to let her know that this was Scientology and they have a strong influence in this case. They've had a big impact on these victims and I wanted her to have a heads up that there may be some shenanigans, some harassment, stalking, retaliation. Those things might be a possibility. Two other attorneys declined to sit second chair in the case for fear of church interference, Mueller said in the video. Before Deputy District Attorney Ariel Anson took the job. And guys, that that's who's in the thumbnail of this video is Deputy DA Reinhold Mueller and Deputy DA Ariel Anson. <clears throat> while Mueller, while Deputy DA Reinhold Mueller was on a trip outside California shortly before Masterson's second trial, Mueller received a panicked phone call from his wife, said two officials not authorized to speak publicly. Uh, Mueller's wife heard glass breaking and went downstairs to find a window had been damaged. The incident led the DA's investigators to guard Mueller's home overnight. LAPD were also called to the scene. Unknown suspect used unknown tool to break window. Suspect did not make entry and fled. Read the LAPD report, which listed Mueller's wife as the victim. Hmm. LAPD said an investigation into the break-in remains ongoing. And of course, uh, Scientology spokeshole Corinne Powell says, it's all lies. And actually, I like this quote. It's unbelievable on the, the claims are outlandish and unbelievable on their face. <laughs> I think on their face is actually where they're most believable, Corinne. <laughs> oh my goodness. They're all bigots. It's all religious bias. She goes, if Mueller said these things, then it's part of a campaign of blatant harassment against Scientology. Scientology never engaged in the conduct he alleges. 
Guys, I, I love it when people who couldn't possibly have the knowledge they're claiming to speak about says things like it's just an absolute fact. It's almost like when, um, if Corinne Powell were to be like, David Miscavige was not, uh, never met this person. It was like, how do you know, Corinne? I, I don't know. I feel like I'm being a little naive here about how, how spokespeople operate or how attorneys operate. But it's like, when, couldn't you at least say David Miscavige claims to have never spoken to this person? I don't know. It just tickles me when people state things as a fact, as if they have knowledge they're actually not capable of having. All right. Um, Mueller's colleagues defended him. Oh, I like this one. Uh, this is from Deputy DA Eric Sadal, a former VP of the union representing rank and file prosecutors. It was news to me that there was a union for prosecutors. But anyway, um, Deputy DA Eric Sadal says, Mueller has a reputation as being extremely careful, honest, and straightforward. Yeah, I mean, anyone who's had anything to do with Mueller um, can, can tell that about him. So the fact that Mueller would get up on stage at an award ceremony where he received an award for his prosecution of Danny Masterson and essentially, you know, taking on Scientology, let's be real. And he told these stories. If Mueller didn't have an extremely high degree of confidence that this was associated with Scientology, he wouldn't say it. It doesn't matter if it can be proven in a court of law. We're not in a court of law. The standards of evidence for a court of law are irrelevant to the conversation at hand. It's very noteworthy that someone as careful, and when I can say conservative, I don't mean politically conservative. I just mean a, a, you know his, his approach to things. Someone as careful and conservative as Mueller would make such a speech at an awards ceremony. To me, that carries a lot of weight. <sighs> okay, let's see what else here. Some of this stuff gets into other Scientology stuff that's just not terribly, terribly interesting to me. Uh, okay, we're going to skip this whole section here. Oh, this is interesting. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Here we go. Let's tackle this. Allegations that Scientology was attempting to influence the Danny Masterson case first spilled into court last May when Mueller told the trial judge that Scientology had obtained a very large quantity of discovery materials. The files, according to a transcript of the hearing, included emails and text messages between investigators and Masterson's accusers. Guys, this is something that happened as an as the um as a byproduct of the incestuous relationship between Scientology's own attorneys and their own defense team and Danny Masterson's attorneys and his defense team Scientology's team and Danny Masterson's team which let's be honest it was the same team were sharing information illegally with each other despite the fact that the judge had ordered Danny's team not to share any discovery materials with the civil defense team. Because in the civil lawsuit, Danny Masterson and Scientology and David Miscavige are actually co-defendants. You have Danny Masterson's criminal trial, and then you have a civil trial that has to do with harassment, stalking, fair game, and intimidation. In the civil trial, Danny Masterson, David Miscavige, and Scientology are co-defendants. And so the judge said, hey, any discovery in this criminal case, you are not to share it with the civil team at all. And yet that is exactly what happened. Uh, okay. Mueller said in court that he learned the materials were in Scientology's possession after an attorney for Scientology mistakenly attached them to an email to the district attorney's office. The message was intended to be a complaint against Deputy DA Mueller and his co-counsel, but it also included a message to the LAPD chief written on Scientology letterhead that included links to about 570 pages of the people's discovery. Weeks earlier, LAPD chief Moore had met with the Scientology representatives in his office at LAPD headquarters. According to the former chief who retired at the end of February, Scientology had accused LAPD detectives and prosecutors on the Danny Masterson case of misconduct. LAPD chief Moore said he agreed to hear them out. The meeting last April was not listed on a copy of the chief's official schedule obtained by the LA Times. Moore and an LAPD spokesperson said it was attended by Scientology's head of security, I wonder if that was, and by their attorney, Vicki Podbrowski, uh, who was the attorney who accidentally emailed the protected files to Mueller. Vicki Podbrowski did not respond to multiple requests for comment. She previously told the Times that the documents were legally and properly obtained. Two other attorneys responsible for disclosing the files were sanctioned 
by Danny Masterson's trial judge. Those two attorneys who were sanctioned was Thomas Mesereau and Sharon Applebaum. And I've always wondered whether, act, whether they were actually the ones who shared the files or whether they just chose to make a professional decision and fall on their swords for someone else who shared the files. Uh, perhaps we'll never really know. Uh, okay, back to the document. Scientology and LAPD Chief Moore have given contradictory accounts of the reason for the meeting. <laughs> no shocker there. According to LAPD Chief Moore's recollection, Vicki Podboreski and her group reminded the chief that Scientology was not part of the trial, but said they had come to share allegations that detectives and prosecutors on the case had falsified witness testimony, overstated or coached witness testimony, and withheld evidence. I'm sorry. I just find it unbelievable that Scientology's civil attorneys are going to the LAPD chief and complaining about the way LAPD officers are testifying in Danny Masterson's criminal trial and that the LAPD chief Moore would even bother to take such a meeting. Okay. Vicki Podboreski also claimed to have boxes and files and electronic documents that would demonstrate clearly such mis misconduct, according to LAPD chief Moore. Um, Corinne Powell, the church spokeshole, insisted that the meeting had nothing to do with the Masterson case. Oopsie, that's a little lie. Scientology, quote, Scientology requested to meet with Chief Moore to present complaints about bias and misconduct by LAPD officers with respect to Scientology, including accepting and maintaining open investigations of blatantly false reports about Scientology. The LAPD accepted the complaints and opened an investigation for the reported misconduct, which includes the disposition of open cases as to Scientology. It was explicitly stated that the meeting was not in connection with the Masterson trial, and the prosecutor was never discussed. All right. In both a November 2023 interview with The Times and in response to questions about Powell's statement, LAPD Chief Moore remained steadfast that the meeting was in relation to the Masterson trial. Through an LAPD spokeswoman, uh, LAPD Chief Moore reiterated that Scientology officials brought boxes of alleged evidence of misconduct by our detectives and the prosecution. God, Scientology just can't stop lying about, like, does science, so Scientology is now calling LAPD Chief Moore a liar. Everyone's just a liar. Liar, liar, liar. <clears throat> All right, there's some other interesting parts here. The judge in the Danny Masterson case ruled last year that Scientology's complaints about Deputy DA Reinhold Mueller and his co-counsel Ariel Anson were demonstrably false. LAPD Chief Moore said the department conducted its own internal investigation, which was not completed at the time of his interview. He does not believe law enforcement committed any misconduct in the case. Well, it's good to see the LAPD chief at least have um, his officers back in this case and not, uh, at least he's siding with his officers and not siding with Scientology. Um, but okay, I really like this, th this commentary here. LAPD Chief Moore's decision to take the meeting set off alarm bells, both within the LAPD and within the district attorney's office. Danny Masterson had been the target of an LAPD investigation. And even if LAPD Chief Moore took no action, there were concerns the meeting could create an appearance of impropriety. One high-ranking LAPD official and two sources within the DA's office said it was highly unorthodox for LAPD Chief Moore to personally receive an internal affairs complaint. The timing seemed extremely inappropriate to me, said an LAPD official. In the middle of a trial, you're going to take a meeting because they're high-up attorneys with the Church of Scientology? Huh. In court, Mueller said that Scientology's visit to LAPD headquarters did impact the case, noting that one of the lead detectives, Esther Miape, expressed reservations about testifying after news of the meeting surfaced. The judge described the timing of Scientology's allegations against the detectives as calculating, noting that the meeting with LAPD Chief Moore took place just days before Detective Miape was scheduled to testify. Um. Okay, let me see. Some of this stuff I feel like is about to get a little back into the weeds again. Let me see. 
oh, that's fine. This still seems relevant. Let's keep going. In his declaration in the civil lawsuit on behalf of Dana Masterson's victims, attorney Simon Lean also accused Scientology of filing baseless accusations against the LAPD detectives themselves and the prosecutors in the Danny Masterson case that were timed to interfere with the retrial of Danny Masterson. Um, the LAPD officers and detectives declined to comment, which is understandable. LAPD Chief Moore said that several LAPD detectives on the Danny Masterson case reported some type of harassment, which they attributed to agents or individuals from Scientology. An internal LAPD investigation, however, found no evidence of Scientology involvement. To me, again, I don't know about you guys, to me, it's not a shock that any investigation doesn't turn up actual hard evidence of Scientology's involvement. I mean, it'd be nice if it did, but it would be um, pretty careless. It'd be pretty careless for them to conduct this type of harassment against police officers and district attorneys in a way where it could be um, solidly traced back to Scientology. Of course, Scientology then claims uh, everyone's lying and everyone's a bigot and uh, everyone is just part of a coordinated conspiracy to uh, bring down Scientology, blah, 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 blah. Um, oh, okay. Here we go. Here's another excerpt. LAPD Chief Moore acknowledged frustration in the ranks of the LAPD about his meeting with Scientology officials, but maintained that the situation warranted his involvement. Quote, the person who represents themselves as the counsel for Scientology was making very aggressive and very serious charges of prosecutorial misconduct, as well as department misconduct. And I, out of the abundance of caution, wanted to ensure that they understood that we took that seriously. Oh, that explanation does not pass the sniff test. <laughs> Why would the LAPD chief care whether Scientology's attorneys thought they were taking it seriously? Is the opinion of Scientology's attorneys an overriding concern for the LAPD chief? Who gives a damn? There's a criminal trial ongoing. What you should also take very seriously is, um, is protecting the officers who are testifying in that trial and not telegraphing to them that you might care more about Scientology's thoughts and feelings and their attorney's thoughts and feelings than the thoughts, feelings, and safety of your officers who are set to testify yet again in just a couple days in the Danny Masterson criminal trial. Yeah, that explanation doesn't pass the sniff test at all. Okay, the article then gets into a, 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 a whole other issue of Scientology. Um, uh, in my words, I'm very loosely paraphrasing this, kind of framing a guy for a crime and then saying, if you will blame Leah Remini for, uh, your, as the inspiration for your crime, we will... Um, do what we can to get the charges dropped. I've already done a video about that. I don't want to go through all that again right here. Da, 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 da. Let's see if there's any. I felt like there was like one paragraph. Nope, that's it. That's all I want to discuss in this article. Fascinating stuff, guys. <laughs> really fascinating stuff. Um, I, uh, yeah, I'm glad this article came out. And um, again, I hope. Uh, now, 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 when I said earlier in the video that I, I was hoping to get my hands on the audio recording of Reinhold Mueller's speech at the awards ceremony, this article referred to that recording as a video, not just an audio recording. So I guess that means I'm hoping to get my hands on the video. And if I do, you can be sure I'm going to publish it. Okay, let's see. Let's look at the comments and then we'll wrap this one up. I got so many videos to do today and so much other stuff to do today. Dave Bowen. Looks like Osa crapped on their own shoes again. Yep, just like Osa, just shitting all over themselves. Thank you, Dave Bowen. Zygma182, I'm amazed they haven't tried to or have already unalived people for the greater good. Would they ever do that if Miscavige ordered it? Well, look, if Miscavige ordered it, would they do that? Yes, they would. Uh, that's the one thing in my videos, you guys know, like, you guys know I have I've come, come after Scientology pretty hard um, all day long, every day. 
But I have actually been pretty clear in all my videos that the one thing Scientology has stopped short of is actually ordering people to be unalived or unaliving people um, themselves. Uh, they uh, uh, have encouraged their own members to unalive themselves on a number of occasions. Uh, but it does seem to be the one line they have not been willing to cross. If Miscavige ordered it, you better believe somebody would do it. Absolutely. Midwest Kid Doc. Welcome as a new channel member, Midwest Kid Doc. Uh, Casey Cat says that something happened to Emily D. Baker when she was prosecuting someone related to Scientology. She would not give the details, but her and her family had police protection. One of these days, I am so dying that I uh, to have an opportunity to discuss with Emily D. Baker what that was. I know she's discussed it like just sort of quickly a couple times on her channel, but how 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 fun would that be for us to be able to do a chat together about that? Who knows, guys? One of these days, Emily W. Four two gifted five channel memberships. Thank you, Emily W. Forty two. That's very kind of you. I appreciate that. Valentina Creel, never interrupt your enemy when he's busy destroying himself. Leave it to Scientology. They cannot help themselves. That is very true. Thank you for that. Funny Hat Blue. Thank you for all your hard work, Aaron. Well, thank you for your super chat and thank you guys all for your support and viewing and subscribing and all that good stuff. By the way, guys, we got almost 2,300 people watching right now. Hit that like button for me. If you're watching right now, we're 30 minutes into the video. Hit that like button, guys. I'd really appreciate it. Uh, Ken's channel says, if it walks away like a ducky, stay silent like a ducky and harasses enemies of the cult. It's a ducky. <laughs> Ken, you got the best comments. Um, Rona Cooley. Wow. It's been a month already. Rona Cooley has been a channel member for a month. Congratulations on your one month anniversary, Rona. And thank you for continuing to be a channel member. Lisa Raphael, for the love of Xenu, please continue to pronounce Scientology. Like Cartman, yes. Scientology, <laughs> respect my authority. Uh, all right, guys, that's all on this. So much more to come today. Stay tuned, guys. Hit that notification bell. Sometimes it does something, I hear, maybe. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Thanks to everyone who watches until the very end, and I'll talk to you soon. Okay, if you want to see my rock and roll songs, click right on this guitar. And if you want to see an, a different one of my videos, then you could click right in right here. If you have subscribed or not, subscribe right here. Bye.